in our world business news, U.S. President Barack Obama and congressional leaders of both the Republican and Democratic Party began high-stake talks at the White House on Sunday to break an impasse over raising the U.S. debt ceiling. Failure to clinch a deal before the August 2nd deadline could lead to a first-ever default on U.S. fiscal obligations, from bond payments to checks for the elderly. Aides to Obama and Republican House Speaker John Boehner for months have been working on a far-reaching package of spending cuts and new sources of tax income. Republicans reject Democrats' call for more tax revenue and instead are pressing to cut entitlement programs, such as Medicare and Social Security. The Democrats, however, insist the deficit-cutting plan must include more taxes from higher-income Americans. An agreement is vital to clear the way for lifting the 14.3 trillion US dollar cap on the government's borrowing capacity. And to talk more about the subject that the US is at the brink of default as well as Friday's very disappointing US jobs report, we are now joined by Gaurav Kashyap, head of DGCX Trading at Alpari Middle East DMCC. Welcome, Gaurav. Thank you, Linda. Now, this jobs report from Friday, is that something that is r rather dollar bullish or will it end the dollar rally? What do you think? Well, Linda, if you saw the immediate reaction of the U.S. dollar following the announcement um, of the U.S. jobs report, you'd have noticed that the U.S. dollar immediately sold off on the news. Uh, Euro USD, GBP USD, commodities, they all moved higher for a very brief amount of time before the U.S. dollar parted its earlier losses and closed the week on a very strong note. Now, to get back to your question, I think that the dollar movement as a result of this uh, disappointing jobs report will definitely strengthen on the news. Uh, the reaction we saw immediately following the news was perhaps because of rumors or speculation that such a poor jobs report could lead to additional quantitative easing measures from the U.S. And if that does happen, then we could see the dollar weakening on the news. But if you look at the jobs report, um, it was quite shocking to say the least. About 18,000 jobs were added. Uh, it, it, was, it doesn't seem like it's a soft patch of poor data coming from the U.S. It is worse than May's reading. And, uh, you know, we need to find a situation now in the U.S., that what can be done to re-stimulate and re-kickstart this uh, economy. And on the back of that, we have this pending story, which you had alluded to earlier about the U.S. debt ceiling, which is going to take main, main presidents in the next two weeks. Surprisingly, it's not so much in the news these days. The whole thing was always about Greece. Anyway, do you think that the de Democrats and the Republicans will reach an agreement? If they don't, the U.S. is in default, the world's largest economy. Look, I don't... Uh, I don't see a situation where they can't raise the debt ceiling. There's, it's going to be a big power struggle between the Democrats and the Republicans. We have the head of the state, President Obama, who is obviously representing the Democratic Party, whereas on the other hand, we have the House of Representatives, which the Republicans have a majority in. So it's really going to be a, a situation whereby they can come to a common conclusion and they can raise the debt ceiling. We have uh, two scenarios. President Obama has pledged that he wants to reduce about $4 trillion in debt, that's going to come through a combination of higher taxes, which the Republicans don't want, and uh, a drop in fiscal spending by cutting secu Social Security, reforms in Medicaid and, and um, Medicare as well. But uh, the Republicans, on the other hand, are looking for something more conservative along the lines of $2.4 trillion, and that also over a period of 10 years. So I'm pretty sure that we will see a solution to the problem. It's just who is going to be blinking first. I would definitely focus on the dollar trade in the meantime. We can focus on the dollar gaining on this negative jobs report. Uh, but if we do have any hints of quantitative easing part three, then you can expect the dollar rally to stop. We'll see what happens. Thanks for coming in. See you next week. And moving on with our international stories, Australian shares of coal miners, steel firms and airlines fell on Monday after the country's government introduced a carbon tax scheme over the weekend. However, economists say that the 23 Australian dollar tax per tonne of carbon will have only little impact on growth. For instance, they expect the tax to add less than two Australian dollars to each tonne of coal produced, despite miners warning the tax would hurt jobs and hinder investments. Airline companies would be more affected, according to the experts, with the tax they forecast profits could fall by as much as 15 percent. To avoid a public backlash, the Australian government announced it will return 24 billion Aussie dollars raised from the carbon tax to households through tax cuts and higher welfare payments. I want to particularly highlight the huge investments in renewable energy that this package brings. Billions of dollars of new resources to help build that clean energy future for Australia. Car maker Toyota's premium brand Lexus will lose its place as the top luxury brand in the US this year, ending an 11-year streak. 
The Japanese automaker said its U.S. sales of Lexus models are expected to fall 17 percent this year in the aftermath of the earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan in March. Because except for one model, all Lexus cars are assembled in its home market. This means German automaker BMW will take the number one spot in the U.S. this year. It will be the first time since 1997 that BMW will outsell Lexus and dominate the U.S. upper segment. BMW saw its U.S. sales in the first six months of the year surge 13 percent. Before we go, here's a quick overview of the Asian equity indices as well as the oil and currency markets. And after that, we have the day's sports news for you.